Thank you for the grace given unto us to be a partaker of this word. Be exalted, be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. The year 2020 is almost rounding up. And we are entering the year 2021. This is a year, the year that is coming, that you need to walk towards not allowing demons to enter your life, to enter your children, to enter your home, to enter your family, to enter your habitation. Demon unleashed. It's time for you to take charge of your destiny and of your life. We know in our days God already prophesied and said through Paul, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. In the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of themselves. All those things you see there, when it says perilous, dangerous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. There is a demon of self-loving, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents. Plural there. God as our parent, our spiritual parent, and our physical parent who are teaching us in the way of the Lord, the way of the Bible. Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. These are not vices. These are demons unleashed. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Having, he said, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. God will always ask us to turn away from darkness. So these are forces of darkness that has been unleashed from the powers of hell to invade our socio-political system, to invade our culture, to invade our marriage, our family, to invade the entertainment um, uh, strata, uh, stratum, to invade our environment, to invade our economy, to invade our government, to invade the education, to invade our technology, to invade our social media, to invade the religious system. So it's time for us to take charge. He talks about the prince of the power of here that we must not be ignorant of. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Remember in Luke chapter 4, scripture says, Satan said that all this word, everything in the world, has been delivered unto me. Luke chapter 4. We read all the way from verses 4 through 6. They have been delivered. He said, Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, The man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into an high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power, look at what you were saying, all this power, all this power, all this power, will I give thee and the glory of them. Oh God, the glory, the, the glory, the, 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 the things of this world that you see, for that is delivered unto me. Oh God, is and to whomsoever I will, I'll give it. Satan speaking. He said, I got it. I got the money. Do you need the money? I got the pride. I got the uh, technology. Everything has been delivered unto me. I'll give it to whomsoever I I want. So in this day and hour, God is telling you and I, we must not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. He wants to penetrate into your life. That's why you need Jesus. He has to be your heart. He wants to penetrate into your finances, into your health, into your destiny. Remember that the heart has been given to we, the children of men, but he stole it. That's why Jesus came back to give it back to us. Psalms 115 verse 16. He said, God, the heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has been given to we, the children of men. He's ours originally. He stole it, but the second Adam came to take it away from him and give it back to us. Psalms 8 verses 4, 6. 
Jesus told us that he has given everything to us to take dominion. Thou madest man to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, walking daily in dominion. Walking daily in dominion. Walking daily in dominion. No wonder in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give you power to trample upon scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy. Nothing shall by enemies hurt you. God recognized that he has given power even to the enemy. God gave him the power. He said, over all the power of the enemy. But for us, with the power of the Holy Spirit, he said, nothing shall by enemies hurt us. No wonder in Matthew chapter 2, he said, when an evil spirit depart from a man, he said, he will go to the desert, dry place, to find rest. He said, if he cannot find, he gone back to his house. You know, if we find him empty, swept, and garnished, you go and look for other seven spirits that are wicked than himself, plus seven. That's eight. Eight is number, the number for new beginning. And they enter him and dwell there. Hey, they enter. So what good it is when an evil spirit is cast out, and when it is cast out now, it's bringing seven more deadlier, wicked, evil spirit to possess that man. He said, and the last state of that man is worse than the beginning, than the first. And what causes this? You know what causes it? Because when the evil spirit was cast out, the man was empty. The man was garnished. And the man was not occupied. In Jude chapter 1 verse 6, only one chapter, God told us the habitation of wicked angels. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he had reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. They are not permitted to invade your mind. They are not permitted to cause mental challenges for you. They are not permitted to destroy your life. They are not permitted to destroy your marriage. They are not permitted to waste your children. They are not permitted to cause you to die before time. It's time for you to take charge in the year 2021 of every unclean spirit and their manifestations. Whether you like it or not, every day, every minute, every hour, you and I, we are constantly involved in wrestling. Oh, wrestling with forces that you cannot see. The Bible talks about the four horns in the book of Zechariah. He said, what are these four horns that has come to destabilize Jerusalem? Oh God, when God says, I want to build Jerusalem with prosperity, but four horns, four horns they lifted up themselves to fray Jerusalem. But God sent, oh carpenters, he sent carpenters. Jesus is the carpenter of all carpenters. I prophesy over your life, the carpenter who is a builder, the carpenter who has armor, the armor of the world, the carpenter who has nails to drive in the glory of God into your life is at work right now in the name of Jesus. It's time for you to take charge. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 and 14. To 12 told us about he informed us about the four carpenters he said one of them is about the four arms he said one of them is principality another one is powers another one is spiritual weakness in high places and rulers of the darkness of this world they rule they rule unclean spirit familiar spirit there is a seducing spirit in these last days to seduce you to do the things that are not convenient. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. There are doctrines of devils permeating the land. You can see the kind of a picture. Now this picture are not really the picture of this spirit because they are spirit. But they give you a kind of um, a graphic understanding of what God is talking about. Seducing spirits and doctrines or teaching of the devil. The Bible talks about a reprobate mind. 
reprobate means criminal. It means unprincipled. In Romans chapter 1 verse 8, it says, and even as they did not like to retain God, they don't want God. They don't want his word. They don't want his knowledge. 18. He said, they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. God, Romans 1 18, gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God gave them a reprobate mind. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11, he said, God sent them strong delusions. I'm talking about seducing spirit. I'm talking about doctrine of demons. I'm talking about unclean spirit. I'm talking about familiar spirit. I'm talking about a reprobate mind. Now I'm talking about strong. It's not an ordinary delusion. Strong delusion. The purpose of strong delusion is for people to believe in a lie. And you know before Jesus returns, many shall be deceived. Believing in a lie. A time comes in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20, 21 and 22. When people will begin to call good evil. They we call light darkness. He said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. That put darkness for light and light for darkness. That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 21. Look at it. He said, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. The spirit that energized Cain is an household destroyer. Is there an household destroyer in your life? Cain was the brother of Abel. The spirit that energized Lot is a burden, spirit of burden, spirit of weight. Esau, evil pursuer. Balaam, oh God, energized by an evil spirit of Herod. The Bible talks about Jude 11. In Jude 11, it says, Herod of Balaam. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 15, it said, the gain of Balaam. And in Revelation 2, 14, it talks about the doctrine of Balaam. Bilam invading our churches. Oh God, what about the spirit of Amon? Ethnic, ethnic war, genocide spirit, Gehazi spirit, covetousness, spirit of Pisgah, Deuteronomy chapter 34. You read down, seeing the promised land, not being able to enter it. The spirit of Goliath, that giant that wants to kill you and finish you. Herod, that kills good things at infancy. Herod, Herod. We know Canaanite spirit. Cana means, what is it that Cana means? It means, it derived from the root word Cana, which means to bring down by an heavy load. Are you heavy laden? Do you have all those ites bombarding you, wanting to enter your life, enter your marriage, enter your family? Itites, they were giants who brought fear and confusion. Gagashites, one that returns back from pilgrimage. When people go back to earthly things, worldly things. Hamorites, they are people who are arrogant and boastful in their speech. Parasites, they are people who separate themselves and live in unprotected, unworthy village. Hevites, they claim to offer a good lifestyle, living by phrases such like, if it feels good, then you can do it. Don't worry what people think. Don't worry, all shall be well. And they look out for number one. They lived a very luxurious life. Jebusites, they are people who exploit. They exploit others and they pollute others through immoral activities. What about Amalekites? Very wicked. They strike at your most vulnerable position. When you are most vulnerable, strike the woman. Strike the children. Absalom spirit is on the rampage. Spirit of rebellion. Ahitophel spirit. Evil counselor. Spirit of Ishmael. Counterfeit blessing. That we share and say God did it. But God didn't do it. We did it. Judah spirit. Doek spirit. Ataliah spirit. Jezebel spirit. Jezebel was dead in 2 Kings. But Jezebel spirit showed up in Revelation. Pharaoh spirit, pursuer of destiny, that hold back in captivity. Achan spirit, spirit of Pharisees and Sadducees, which are hypocrisy. The Philistinism, spirit of the Philistines. Oh God, with the five cities of the Philistines, Gaza, Ascalon, Ashdod, 
got an ikron that can be likened to your five physical senses they are crude they are warlike they make you to turn to not believe God but to believe what you see a generation is rising in Judges chapter 2 verse 10 and also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord nor yet the works that he has done there's a generation that's writing in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 11 he said there's a generation that cursed their father and does not bless their mother there's a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness there is a generation who are lofty at their highs and their high lips are lifted up begin to look at the picture that you're seeing right now there is a generation whose teeth they are like cobras they are fangs they are like lions whose teeth are as sword and they are jotted as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men oh my goodness but in Acts chapter 8 verse 33 in his humiliation his judgment was taken away and who shall declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth who will declare the generation of Jesus I stand here to declare his generation Acts chapter 13 verse 36 for David after he has served his own generation by the will of God fell asleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption Psalms 22 verse 30 a seed shall serve Jesus it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation are you that seed that will serve Jesus Psalms 24 verse 6 this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face O Jacob Selah it's time to deal with all the forces of hell that want to penetrate your life that want to destroy your life it's time to deal with all the gatherings together of principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in every places and rulers of the darkness of this world now what are the things you need to do what are the precautions that you must take at this time oh God this is the time for you to submit yourself to God James chapter 4 verse 7 he says submit yourself to God submit yourself to his word submit yourself to the ordinances of God submit yourself to Jesus it's time for you and I to begin to submit ourselves to God because when we submit ourselves to God we stand the chance to now begin to resist the devil all these forces put together you begin to resist them and what will they do they will flee from you submit yourself to God resist the devil and they flee from you it's time now we need power to resist and the power we got it from submission and when we do so the blood of Jesus is effective for us it's time for us to begin to go back to the foundation of the blood of Jesus don't forget what it says in Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 it said they overcome by the blood of the lamb by the word of their testimony and they do not love their lives unto death oh we overcome by the blood when I see the blood of Passover the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus it's time for you to begin to sprinkle the blood oh in your house sprinkle the blood of Jesus by what you say begin to realize the power and the efficacy of the blood of Jesus via holy communion and the blood of the sprinkling the enemy knows their barrier they know they can't go beyond the boundary of the blood when the Lord released the angel of death in the land of Egypt angel of death all they are looking for is the blood when they see the blood they'll pass over they'll pass over in your life angel of death pass over angel of destruction pass over angel of virus and pestilence pass over they will not come near you in the name of Jesus rules of engagement it's time for us to begin to apply the blood of Jesus also we know in Matthew chapter 17 in 21 he said now this demon cannot go this oppression did you see the way your children are be behaving 
Did you see the spirit of disobedience that has entered them? God says, you want to deal with this? In the year 2021, how big this kind going on out? But by prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. Or fasting and prayer, better said. It's no more a choice. It's no more what you have to do when you feel like. It's no more what you have to do because, you know, some demon are harassing you or you can't sleep or you have nightmare. It's now what you have to do regularly and constantly. Why? Oh, we are fighting against the one who has come to steal, who has come to kill, who has come to destroy. But we have the one, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the King of Glory, the one who conquered all, the one who is triumphant, the one who's holy, the one who's righteous, the one who has all power and all authority. He has it in his hand. The one who has given us the victory. He has come to give us life and to give it to us in an abundant measure. It's one thing for God to give us something. It's another thing for us to embrace it. Are you embracing the life that God has come to give you? There is life in the blood. He said the life of the flesh is in the blood of Jesus. The life of the flesh is in the word. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life is in the word. Why? Because the flesh is the word. The word of Jesus. He said the word became flesh and it dwells among us. Oh God, the life that God has come to give you reside in the world. It's time for us to begin to engage the power in fasting and prayer and also the power of the word. The word, it is written, it is written. The word has missiles. Don't missile inside it. We call it divine nature. Inside the word, there are divine nature. You need this so you will not have the spirit of God of the devil coming to invade your life to invade you when you're sleeping oh for how long are they going to be raping you in your dream for how long are they going to be force feeding you in your dream for how long are you going to be pregnant in the dream for how long will you be seeing blood in your dream for how long will they be shooting you in your damn dream for how long will they be dismembering you and you are falling down from high places you are you see yourself naked for how long? Oh, God has given you the power. He has given you the victory. For how long will you be driving? You press the brake. Oh, God, the brake won't stop the car until you have an accident and you wake up. Your heart is beating. Some powers are pressing you down while you are sleeping. You slept. You wake up. You saw marks on your body. For how long? For how long will you be dining with the dead? For how long will you be at the mortuary? Seeing yourself in a casket. No, I reject that for you. Because the power of God is made available for you. The power of his word. The power of his Holy Spirit. It's time for you to take charge. Fill yourself with the word. Oh, the Bible says, and give no place to the devil. Ephesians chapter 4. He told you and I. He said, give no place to the devil. That means every place in your life. Oh God, every place in the life of your children. What they watch, what they see. Give no place to the devil. Neither give place to the devil. So it's your prerogative. It's your right. I don't know how much place you want to give to the devil. Do you want to give the devil 10%? If you give him 10%, he will go for 100%. If we give him 5%, the devil will take all the place in your life. He will take peace. He will take joy. He will reduce your family to fighting. He will reduce your family to disunity. He will reduce your family to disharmony. He will reduce your family to death. He has come to kill. He has come to steal. He has come to destroy. Oh, give no place to the devil. Give no place to the devil. David, the lover of God, he gave the devil a little place in his life. And you, you can see what the devil did. How the devil almost ruined the dynasty of David. Give the devil no place. If you've given him a place, today you need to ask him to pack his load and depart. Exit. Give him, give him eviction. Give the devil an immediate eviction out of your soul, out of your body, out of your finances, out of the church of God. Give the devil no place. No more place. 
in your generation. No more place in your home. No more place in your garage. No more place in your eyes. No more place in your nose. No more place in your body. No more place in anything you do. The Bible says, give him no place. By the word. Which means, be being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's time for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh God Almighty. Oh God Almighty. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? How will God find faith? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. That's why when you read the Bible, you hear about some people that are faithful. They are full of faith. They are joyful. They are full of joy. They are peaceful. They are full of peace. He said, be being filled with the Holy Ghost. Ephesians chapter 5. Be being filled. Speaking to yourself in Psalms, in spiritual songs, and making melody to God in your heart. It's time for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So, succubus. Incubus, Bacchus, those demon entity as women, demon entity as men, and the gods of wine and the goddesses. He said, Diana, the great goddess of Ephesians. So they will not begin to invade you and harass you and make you to be a loser in life. It's time for you to take charge and be filled with the spirit of the living God. It's time for you to begin to bask in the Holy Ghost. Oh, for we do not know how to pray the way we ought to pray. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, we do not know how to pray the way we ought to pray. But the spirit itself make an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that prayed the mind of God, he knows how to pray the will of God for us. Oh, it's time for you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You wake up in the morning. You wake up 3 a.m. You go to your children's room. Oh God, you begin to lay hands on them. I plead the blood of Jesus upon you. I plead the blood of Jesus upon you. I plead the blood of Jesus upon you. Ah, it's time for you to begin to plead the blood and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost because the demons, they want to invade you. The demons, they want to silence you. The demons, they want to confiscate your blessing. The demons, they want to destroy your life. The demons are here to invade our land, to invade our family, to invade our destiny. They want to take over the church of God, the Jezebel spirit, the Atalaya spirit. Oh God, the spirit that make men to begin to be seduced. Seducing spirits are here. It's time for us to reject every evil spirit and give God a chance. God is calling you and I. We are to occupy until Jesus comes. Occupy. Be in charge until the Lord comes. Oh God, we are not to take one minute break and say I'm off. I want to go for vacation. There is no room for vacation because Jesus is coming soon. And when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith of the earth? Jesus is coming. And Jesus is coming for Jesus. Jesus is not coming for demons. Jesus is not coming for what is empty. Jesus is not coming for what is weak. Jesus is not coming for that which has spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Jesus is not coming for Ishmael. Jesus is not coming for counterfeit. Jesus is coming for original. It's time for you and I to stand the ground and say, No more. You can't have my spouse. You can't have my wife. You can't have my children. You can't have my destiny. You can't have my finances. You can't have what belongs to me. Which one have you given to the devil? Which one is the devil possessing right now? Are you possessed by God? Or you are possessed by demons? Is your spirit saved? And your soul is under the control of the powers of the air, of the powers of darkness. Deliver yourself. O oh, daughters of Zion that dwell it in the midst of Babylon. You are light and your light is to shine in the midst of darkness. It is never done that darkness comprehend light. It is never done that the darkness is so thick and the darkness swallow light. It's never done. The Bible says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. It's not about who is wrong. It's not about who is right. It's about the tree of life. The tree of life is Jesus. 
The tree of life is the word of God. The tree of life is the one that has come to redeem us. It's not step one. It's not step two. It's not step three. It's not eating of the good part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because the good part of the tree of knowledge of good and evil will kill you. It will destroy you. But God didn't want you to be killed. Though this one is to be destroyed. He comes to give you abundant life. Would you receive his life? Would you receive his life? Occupy till I come. The question is, when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on the earth? It's not by power. It's not by might. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Oh, when the enemy shall come to invade our life, to invade our homes, to invade our churches, to invade our country, to invade our nation, to invade our family, to invade our finances. When the enemy can come like a flood, the flood that drowns, the flood that destroys, the Spirit of God shall lift up a standard against them. Let's sing the song. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, sing it. Silent fear. Say, Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Silence me Your name is light that the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is life forever lifted high Your name and I'll be overcome. Everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Silent fear. Jesus, Jesus. You make tremble Jesus Jesus yes Lord your name your name is light that the shadows, shadows can deny your name cannot be overcome your name your name is light For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Only the righteous run into that name. They don't walk there. They run. When you run, something is pursuing. When you run, you are drawn. When you run, you have no choice. You want to get something. The righteous run into the name of the Lord and they are safe. Be rest assured that by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the power coming from the words that I'm speaking to you today as you do, no demon, no devil, no principality, no excess, no witchcraft, no divination, no horoscope spirit, all those evil powers, oh God, marine power, terrestrial, celestial, aborea, intercontinental spirit of the devil has no hold over your life. For all authority in heaven and on earth 
has been given to Jesus and he has given you the authority. You stand your ground and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. In Jesus' name.